I was searching Etsy for ceramic frogs to put in my plants. Next thing I know, I had a few vintage mid-century planters in my cart, so I thought I'd invite you to pot them with me. No big secrets here, just low budget, low maintenance, low waste decor. And let's have a moment of silence for the pots that didn't make it in transit. I literally heard the mailman thunk it down on the porch with a rattle. It wasn't Hazel's fault. To figure out which plants I think will look best and what color and shape of planter, I put everything out in front of me, like a palette, plus my gravel and my soil. I put at least three quarters of an inch of gravel or clay pellets in the bottom of each planter. These planters don't have drain holes, so it's important to have something that boosts the roots up out of any excess water after I water them. But I only water every seven to 14 days. It depends on how much sun the plants get. If they're in a sunny window, I water them every week, but I am just not into high maintenance plants. If they require more than once a week, I don't think they're gonna make it with me. I don't use special soil either. You could mix clay or rock or clay, pumice in with your soil. A lot of people do, and that's probably really wise, but I'm too lazy for all that. You can see this is my favorite one. I, this one is, yeah, from the Ungamak Pottery Company. I found that of all the vintage planters I've looked at, they consistently make my favorite shapes. Anyway, I replant these, I repot so quickly that I find the soil doesn't get compacted. This is another one that was damaged in shipping, but I think I've glued it and it's probably watertight, but I'm just gonna keep it outside and I thought the blue would look nice in my kitchen. Some aren't marked and that's fine. I don't care about brands. In fact, I picked up a very recently made pie pan and gave it to my daughter and she made the cutest succulent planter out of it. You really can use anything to plant things in. In fact, the more unusual, the better. I love this butterfly shape, that's a favorite. I also got one for my daughter. You can see she planted it. It's so beautiful. Hopefully this isn't horrible ASMR. I don't mix anything in with my soil. A lot of people do. I've just found that I'm too lazy for that. And I transplant things out of these pots so quickly, the soil doesn't get depleted. I set all of my plants into the pots I thought they would look best in, just kind of as uh, temporarily, just to see what looks good where. And I can mix and match and kind of curate my planters. Sometimes I go for monochromatic, and sometimes I like high contrast. I love the look of these curvy cacti and succulents in this rectilinear planter. I think it looks so good. I've heard it said that you should never try to touch a succulent. Try and touch them as little as possible because the more you handle them, you'll kill them. And I used to be so careful with them when I was younger but I've never had an issue. In fact, some of these little plant babies are from a stepped aloe that I've literally had 30 years. If things survive with me, they're probably pretty tough. This is the stepped aloe I was talking about. Very strong, <laughs> very hardy. 
This is kind of a cheesy looking planter. I got it at a thrift store for $1.50, but I like the shape of it with these cacti. It made me think of like triremes or a, a schooner with the sails unfurled. This is my one-handed planting job. I'm holding the phone with the other. I will find my GoPro eventually. Any leftovers that I couldn't use, I went ahead and tucked them into open spaces in my garden, places where I lost plants in the freeze this winter. This is a bird bath that I just use as a succulent planter now. This little wire basket was some sort of 80s country goose looking thing. I just pried the goose off and voila, it looks super antique window box. I love it. I don't waste the dirt that I get with plants. Uh, if it seems kind of depleted, I can always refresh it with my own dirt, mix it up. I just don't like to waste anything. I always seem to need dirt. And I never wear gloves. <laughs> My patio so needs to be weeded. I have unfinished projects all around me. Driftwood and sun bleached wood for things. We work at things a little at a time as I have the extra money to do it and just so that it's not an overwhelming week of project. Just I like one day projects, one weekend projects. I put a final layer of rock over the plants, mostly because I think it looks really cool, but I've also found that it helps hold the moisture in. And certain windows, like my kitchen, get a ton of sunlight. It's like the best window in the house. Those plants dry out fast, so I found that a little bit of clay pellet or rock on the top, it looks good, it looks really sharp, but it also keeps the soil moist for longer. This is, I could have cut a lot of this footage, but I love the playback of the birds in my neighborhood. I just live in a regular suburban neighborhood in central Texas, but we have so much wildlife. I've never heard so many birds. My first day to wake up here, I saw trees and sky from the bed out of the window, and I thought it was so beautiful to have so many trees in my yard. This is my favorite combination. These succulents look so beautiful in this pot and this has an art deco look to me. I also like this made to look old pot I bought at a local store. Here's my little schooner. these leftovers can be tucked into void spaces. Like I said, I lost quite a few plants in the freeze, so these are handy to tuck into those spots, and they'll grow like gangbusters in my backyard. It's so hot here. This is that aloe that I was talking about that's 30 years old. Not actually that one, but the mother plant. This is what I've got. I feel pretty good about it. I don't know if all of these will survive. I'm interested in seeing what I can grow indoors. I so enjoyed having plants in the house for the winter, so we'll see which ones survive. A few of them I'm acquainted with. I know they'll do fine.
colors. I know I can grow this in a sunny window. This, 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 and this. So we'll see about the rest. Do you use vintage pots or planters? Were they given to you by family members or do you just seek them out like I do? Have you ever used something unusual to put a plant in? Something that wasn't made for plants but looks really cool? Please comment and tell me what it is. I have a post up on the blog about finding vintage containers, planters, specifically mid-century era pottery like these, um, where you can find them, things to look for, and then also alternatives to actual planters meant for plants. So check it out and thank you so much for helping me fill every horizontal surface in my house with something. Mm -hmm.